Okay, welcome to the third episode of the Distro Spinner. It's that all-important part of the week where I let a will decide which Linux distribution I'm going to be using for the rest of the week. On the last episode, we got Salient OS. I'll pop a link up there for the follow-up of Salient OS. But for now, it's all about letting those Linux gods choose our fate. So let's spin that wheel. What we got? Aha, Robo Linux. I've been wanting to use this one for a little while, so I'm quite happy about that. So now what we've got to do is go and download the ISO, set it all up, and then that's us for the week. Okay, so the ISO is finally downloaded. It took a bit longer than what I would have you know, wanted because it's quite a large ISO, about 3.2 gig. And it is also hosted on SourceForge, which isn't my favourite website in the world, I must admit. But anyway, so it comes in free editions, Cinnamon Mate and XFCE, and I do believe Cinnamon is the default version. So we've gone for that. Um, so we're just going to let that DD to USB and then we're going to boot it up in just a moment. Okay, we're nearly to the end of the installation now. It's been a long installation, um, purely because the laptop that I was originally installed it on just decided that it wasn't going to work. I have no idea what's happened. It got sort of halfway through, just turned off. So I plugged the charger in. It's not even picking up a charge now. I have no idea what's happened there. I'll have to investigate that tomorrow. So I've got it installing to an SSD on the, hard, on the um, desktop now. So hopefully we can reinstall now and everything will be all good so we can take a quick look around you know and get us ready for the week but that's basically all we're going to do today because I'll save most of my comments for when I do the follow-up video so we're going to remove that okay we have finally installed to disk that took a rather long time so I'm going to just have a very brief look around now and then I'll save most of my comments for the follow-up video that you'll see in a week's time so we've got some icons here I think that's the developer of the actual distro I don't think that's an actual program I think because it says it's got that into we'll go into it in a moment yeah so these are just web links so I'm going to delete both of these because that will just open up to their web page about the VM stuff I do believe yep so that'll open up some download links so I'm going to just delete both of these off my desktop and then we'll um, we'll drag these up to the top there there we go All right so let's have a look around so it's a standard sort of cinnamon -y desktop layout we've got a panel at the bottom with some windows buttons here a trash can time sort of indicators workspace switcher expo so that's your windows switcher your workspace switcher and we have a couple of quick launches here for files terminal and firefox and now let's go into the applications it comes installed with so in accessories we have archive manager gnome disks files it's probably going to be nemo Yep, Nemo 4.2.3. Let's keep going. Fonts, calculator, help, medit. I do believe that's a text editor of some kind. Yep. Um, and then we also have passwords and keys, another text editor in Pluma, screenshot, and a virtual keyboard. And in graphics, we have document viewer, GIMP, image viewer, shotwell, installers wise. Right, okay, so it comes with quite a lot of installers here. So I'm going to need LibreOffice because I don't think it has anything in Office. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to LibreOffice and we're going to do it their way. I believe that what it does is it just adds the latest repository from LibreOffice and installs it from there. So you get a more up-to-date version than what is included in the um, the repos by default there. I don't know if it needs user input. I don't know if they've done the Y flags or not. I'm going to assume not. So we'll probably have to keep that open so we can sort of press Y every now and then. Okay, so that's that. So what else? So you've got installers for Brave Browser, Google Chrome, Google Earth, um, LibreOffice, Opera, Steam, Tor, Tor Chat. So quite a few installers there that you might want to install. So Brave Privacy Browser, is it already installed then? No. Again, another web link. I don't like all these web links in there. You've got you've got it in installers. Yeah, I don't think you need it in there unless it's actually installed. Um, Deluge, which is a torrent client, Firefox web browser, Pigeon, which is a ch like multi-protocol chat program, Robo Linux news tips and upgrades. I'm going to assume that's another web link. It is okay, and we have screen sharing support, Stealth VM, so the same web link that we had on our desktop there, and we have Thunderbird Mail for our mail client, Document Viewer, in sound and video, we have Audacious, Brazero, Simple Screen Recorder, and VLC Media Player. So Stealth VM, this is um, their sort of Windows E VM thing. I think it uses VirtualBox though, but I'll get into all of this when we do the follow-up video. So we'll just have a quick look. It's got Stealth VM installer, an installer for XP 32 and 64 bits, 
the same for Windows 7 and the same for Windows 10 and it's got back up your Windows virtual machine restore your Windows virtual machine again we'll look at all of that when we do the follow-up video in administration we have auto upgrade Robo Linux 6 ah, there we go look I knew we'd need to press something so yeah it's adding them the um, the repo from LibreOffice so we're probably gonna have to press Y in a moment as well so we'll keep an eye on that um, in administration we have GDB, Gparted, Htop, Install Release, LightDM, Power Statistics, Printer Software, Software Updater, Startup Disk Creator, we also have Synaptic, System Monitors and VirtualBox which is as I say they will utilise VirtualBox in their sort of stealth VM system I assume. Right we're going to press Y there and then that should be the last time we need to press anything and then LibreOffice should be all installed and we'll have a look at that in a moment as well. In administration, we've done that. In preferences, you'll have the usual stuff. You'll find in sort of a cinnamon desktop environment, plus maybe a few things you might not. Um, and in places, we have just quick links to, you know, our places in our home folder. So we're going to leave that there. There's the LibreOffice installer script that this is actually running from there. I wonder if it removes it for us once it's done, hopefully. Okay, what I'm going to quickly do is see what wallpapers it comes installed with out of the box. I'm just going to take a quick screenshot of this one though. Uh -huh. Aha. Where's that save that into pictures? Perfect. Right. So let's have a look at what wallpapers it comes installed with out of the box. Let's just change our wallpaper to one of the defaults. I will download one of my own ones at some point. Um, something simple. That'll do. Perfect. And we've got snapping side by side. Do you have a four way? You do have a four way split. Perfect. Okay, how's our up, uh, LibreOffice going? So LibreOffice is done. Software updater has found. No, it just says you want to restart. We will do a restart in just a moment and get a RAM reading, and then we're going to end the video there because, as I say, we're going to go into more detail in the follow-up. So it's not there. I guess we're going to have to do a restart for it to show. Then is that what they're trying to say? So in Office, it's not there yet. Okay, I'll tell you what. We're going to do a reboot. I'm just going to see what RAM we've managed to accumulate before we do that so we're about 1.5 and we've got a 2 gig swap there oh, it's probably a swap file that they've made um, CPU utilizations eh, flicker in between sort of 0 and 20 30 and then 100 and that core there right we're going to do a very quick reboot get a RAM reading app boot make sure there's nothing else that we haven't taken a look at and then we are golden Okay. I'm not going to stop recording actually. I'm going to let it run to see how quick it is to start up. I will just have to change my boot order though in my BIOS very quickly. Let's mash them keys. Come on. Bang. Right, we're just going to go down to, I think it's an Ubuntu. It registers as Ubuntu. There you go. Right, let's see how quickly this starts up. So it uses all the Ubuntu colours there, but then they have their own splash screen once it gets past this bit. Right, I've got the splash screen on this screen, not on this one though. Right, we have started up. Aha, uh -huh, and there it is now. Um, yeah, that wasn't too bad, to be honest. We did also have to go into our BIOS there as well, just to change the um, the boot order. So let's see what RAM we are using. Okay, so from a fresh boot, we are using 640 megabytes RAM out of 32 gig. That's not too bad. Um, CPU utilization is, you know, where it should be, flickering between one and sort of low single digits. That's all good. Let's close the terminal. So before I finish up, I'm just going to make sure it's got the Office thing. Yeah, we go. So this should be the most recent version of LibreOffice. Let's go to OK. Let's go to Help and About LibreOffice. So this is version 6.4.6.3.4.2. Um, I'm not quite sure what what version number they're on at the moment. Let's have a look. Six point four point zero, six point three point five, and we've got six point three point four. So not quite the latest, but that's not too much of a worry there. Okay, I'm going to end the video there. As I say, I'm going to 
go into a lot more depth when we do the follow-up, especially the Stealth VM stuff, because I'm quite interested in how they actually work that out. If you've got any suggestions for the distro spinner wheel, God, my face has gone all blue. Um, if you've got any suggestions for the distro spinner wheel, if you want to put them in the comments, or I will be taking suggestions from the Discord channel, and I'm going to be putting a lot more effort into sort of getting the Discord channel up and running and making it a nice chill place for us all to hang out. So if you want to go and join that, there'll be a link in the description. Thank you for watching. I will catch you on the next one, which will be in a week for this specific thing. Um, I'll have regular uploads in between. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.